If you're my friend, you probably saw me on my other page at that girl Nina, expressing my thoughts. Um, I was talking to a friend this morning, and <clears throat> I was just expressing to her. Um, it's one thing when you don't understand why you do what you do. And you haven't figured out why things keep happening to you or not even just to you, but why you keep doing the detrimental things to yourself. You know, that's one thing to be ignorant of your ways. But then it's another thing when you've figured out why you do what you do. You found the root of it, but yet you still do the detrimental things to yourself. You still partake in it. Like for instance, you know, I'll use I'll use my myself as an example. Like I know that a lot of things that I do that are not good stems from rejection. It's just a symptom of rejection. Like rejection is the root. Rejection is the root of why I have homosexual thoughts. Rejection is the root of why I even dress a certain way sometimes to impress a dude. Rejection is the root of um, my anger, you know, when I lash out. Um, so I know the root problem. You see what I'm saying? Like I know the root. But I still find myself in the same situations. And I shouldn't say I find myself. I put myself in the same situations. Like I know what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And I still do it. It's just like, it's crazy. Like it just, it reminds me of that scripture in Romans when Paul was talking about the things that I do, I don't want to do, but I do them anyways. And it's like towards the end of the, the passage, he's like, who will, who will, rescue me from this flesh you know what I'm saying and the answer at the end of the passage he's like thanks he said you know thank I'm, I'm paraphrasing he said you know he's thankful that freedom is solely in Jesus Christ is solely in Jesus Christ like he's th he was thankful that because of Jesus, he's free. And so what that tells me is that our freedom may not always be able to be seen in the natural, but our freedom is solely in what Jesus did for us. So currently you might be in bondage to something and you find yourself doing the very thing that you don't want to do. And you do it anyways, and you know it's wrong. But what you are in the spirit, that's who you are. That's how God sees you. You're free because you're free in Christ. And even though your current situation may not look that way, you have to keep telling your mind what it sees. That that's not that's not my reality, even though it is your reality. Like it's so hard to explain, you guys. But like, if you understand what I'm saying, like when Jesus said it's finished, literally everything that we were going to go through, it, it's it's as if it never it's it's as if it never happened. It's as if it doesn't have. The power over us anymore because it's finished it's done the the answer to our struggles the answer to everything that we ever do was done on the cross it is finished it is finished so sometimes I feel like while we're living on this earth while we're living <laughs> taking it day by day. We have to be realistic with ourselves in the natural, right? 
And we have to be like, all right, I know that I'm currently going through this situation. I'm not going to stay here because I don't want to stay in this situation. I'm going to get out someday. And we're pressing our way out, striving, we're trying, even though we may fall backwards sometimes. That is our, that is our, that is our reality. But then we also have to be cognizant of our spiritual reality, which is I'm free. I'm free. I'm free in Christ. Okay. I know I just went back to my ex-boyfriend. We just had sex. Oh, God. I didn't want to do that. But I'm free. I'm, I'm free. I'm free. I have to continue telling myself I'm free. And although that may be kind of stupid to some people, but you have to keep telling yourself, I'm free. I'm free in Christ. And my situation does not define my eternal standing, which is I'm free. I am free. And one day I'm going to get out of this. It may take me five years. It may take me a day, but I'm going to get out. So for me, walking in this journey and through this journey is tough. I'm constantly fighting what I see and telling it that, that that's not that's not the final say for my life. Today, I may be going through this, but I won't be going through that tomorrow. You know, in times to come, I won't be. And I guess the question that I was asking my friend was, man, you know the answer, you know the root problem, but yet you still find yourself in these sticky situations (laughs) you still allow yourself to be in these situations and I'm just like God I can't wait until these situations no longer have power over me and then you know what else I think about too I think about the things that I have conquered that no longer affect me anymore and I think about how long it took me to get to this point It's funny because the enemy will always try to discourage you with your current struggle. And it'll make you forget about what you conquered and what you have conquered today. Like back in the day, you know, let me think of something that I actually conquered. Um, All right, um... I can't think of anything right now. (laughs) I'm trying to think of something real quick of what I conquered that I don't do anymore that I used to do. It's funny because it's like I'm still living my journey through. So it's like a lot of things that I'm that I'm kind of trying to get away from. I'm not too far from them because like I like it wasn't too long ago that I was just bound by them. So it's like I'm in that that weird space where I've gone back to those things, but then I'm still pushing forward. So like last year, for instance, back in 2015, I was really like heavily in the homosexual uh, life. I mean, just heavy. You know, I used to masturbate to women having sex or whatever. I don't do it anymore. But the funny thing about it is it's so, like, 2015 was like, what, three years ago? I'm not too far from 2015. And it's funny because it's like I even still have thoughts. Like, I think it was maybe a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week or two ago where I was just like, man, man. I'm horny. And I can just fix that that little itch by just masturbating. And it's funny because like I even have friends that'll tell me, yeah, girl, just get you a little dildo. 
I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. And so a part of me is like, yeah, I don't do it today. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't masturbated in years. Like, it's been years. And yeah, today I have conquered it. But I'm not too far from it because it's only a thought. Like, it's, li it's literally only a thought away. It's, li it's literally a thought away. You know what I'm saying? It's a thought away. And so um, I thought about doing it or whatever, but I didn't do it. So I'm thankful that I didn't do it, you know. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, heavily in the homosexual lifestyle. And I, and I haven't been in that lifestyle in a minute like I was or whatever. And then... Um, Last year, I had a slip up, you know. I slipped up and I ended up doing something with some girl or whatever. Now, ever since then, I haven't done anything. But once again, just like the masturbation, it's just only a thought away. Because like a couple of, like a week or two ago, I saw the girl that I did something with last, last year. And literally, it just took a hug. I literally, I just hugged the girl. I just hugged the girl. That was it. Hey, how you doing? Kept it moving. And um, we, were, we were in the same building or whatever. And I could tell she was flirting with me. And literally, that boosted up my ego. Boosted up that, that spirit in me. Like, yeah, you can get her if you want it. You know? And but I was like, nope. Nope, nope, nope. We're not doing that. We're not. We're not doing that. We're not going back there. You know what I'm saying? Cause I remembered how it felt to be in that situation, just how grueling that situation was. And I was like, I don't want that. I, I don't want it. My flesh wanted it, but I was like, I don't want it. You know. So even though I I had a victory that day, once again, it's, it's still it's like, but it's just it's one thought away, bruh. It's one thought away. It's the thought of knowing that you can have it, or that you know you you can finagle. You know, and I'm, I can be very, with that spirit that I struggle with is very manipulative, you know, and I use, I use it. I, you know, I can be very manipulative if I, if I wanted to, you know, so I can be very sneaky, you know, and, and getting what I want, you know, and I know, you know, it'd be very cunning, like just to get what I want. It's like, oh, okay. So I know that I still have a chance with this person to do what I want, to get what I want. I know what I can do. I'll, 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 I'll finagle my way. Like I'll be having thoughts like that. You know what I'm saying? So once again, like, even though I'm not in the lifestyle anymore and I'm not like in it like I was back in 2015, it's still, I'm still struggling with it. I'm still, it's still something that it's just a thought away. It's only one thought away from the actual doing of it. You know? And I guess I'm constantly fighting how I was raised in the church. Because in the church, it tells you to flee from sin. And that is wisdom, right? It's, it is wisdom. It's wisdom to flee. It tells you, the Bible tells us to not partake in sin. But then when I read Romans about Paul, the great Paul, the guy whose handkerchief was healing people, his shadow was healing people. That's how powerful God made Paul. And yet Paul still struggled with sin. So what does that tell me? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does that tell me? There, there has to be some type of, I don't know if this is a word, but some type of normality, you know, in the struggle of sin. But yet in the church, we make it abnormal. You know what I'm saying? We make it abnormal to struggle. We make it abnormal to struggle because we read the scriptures to our detriment and we tell people don't do it but we don't leave room for the gray area that gray area is i may still go back to the sin 
And I'm in that process of trying to get away. But yesterday I just did it. But tomorrow I'm not trying to do it. Like that gray area is that that process of where you know it's wrong and you want to get away, but you're not away. But in your heart, you want to get away. And I, I almost feel like God honors that. Like I feel like God honors what's occurring in your heart. That my child doesn't want to do this. My child is struggling. And I just want to cry because God is good, right? He's good and he sees all of that. Like he sees a struggling. He sees the struggles within ourselves. He, and and nobody else can see us like God can. So like as people, we see the outside. We see you know, we see the drunkard on the side of the road and we're like dang, he ain't, you know, he ain't nothing. He ain't going to ever be nothing because, you know, he looks raggedy, beard all messed up, and he's clearly drunk. But we don't see those nights where he goes his little pallet on the side of the street and he's begging. Like, he's begging God. He's begging God. He's like, God, help me. Help me out of this. Help me. We don't see that. We don't see, we don't see that part of him where he's struggling. We don't see that part. We don't see that process. We only see because we're not God. We're not omnipresent. And God sees that. That's why when God was talking to Samuel and he was like, don't judge him by his appearance. People see you by your appearance. He said, but God sees your heart. And that's why I'm so glad that God sees our hearts. And he knows what we're battling with. You know? He sees it. This is why I'm so careful with trying to judge people by their outward appearance. Or say, oh, she's not saved because she's doing this or she's doing that. She can't be saved because this is what she glorifies. You don't know. You don't know the inner workings of that person's heart. You're not God. You don't know what they have made their election. When that scripture word says, choose this day who you will serve, you don't know if she has really chosen Jesus in her heart, but yet this struggle is very loud in her life. But her election in her heart is very quiet, is very soft and quiet, but it's there. The election that I know Jesus is real and I know Jesus is Lord. It's very apparent in her heart, but it's quiet to the world. It's quiet to the world because nobody else can see what's in her heart. But you can you can see her loud objections to God's word. Her loud disobedience to God's word. That's why with homosexuals, you can't say that a homosexual isn't saved because his sin is very loud. But his election in his heart is very quiet and soft. I thank God that God doesn't judge us by how loud we live for him. But he judges what has occurred inside of our hearts. I thank God for that. That's why in Romans, when Paul was talking about our freedom is in Christ. Our freedom is in Christ. I'm so thankful that our freedom, that my freedom is in Christ. No matter how that looks. What does being saved look like? You know, we have literally diminished and, and really um, 
cheapened the gospel by how it's supposed to look. When the gospel was never on the strength of how a human being has transformed in the natural. But it was purely based on God alone and his strength in us. I'm sorry, his strength in himself to keep us. It was based upon his strength and not our strength. Being saved is always and will always and will forever be purely on the strength, on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. But this struggle is something serious, y'all. The sanctification process is something serious, you know. This is why we have to put our hope in Jesus and in Jesus alone because people will make you feel like you are the scum of the scum of the earth for a disease that you are trying. It's like sin is a disease to us. I don't know if you've ever had a disease, you know, like HIV, COPD, you know. And yet, yeah, we did it to ourselves. But then again, it's our nature too. So it's like sin is who we are and we can't help but who we are. Like the Bible says, none are good. There is none that are good but God. Only God is good. So then where does that leave the rest? Where does that leave the latter? It must mean that if none, if the fact that none are good but God, then that must mean that in some way, this is my nature. But yet, I am pressing towards my eternal nature. I can't do that by myself without the help of the Holy Spirit. And I wish that this was being preached more in the church. Because on a, on a scale... On a, on a bigger scale, we still demonize people instead of the sin. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and we don't really empathize with people of how hard it is to not sin when it's your nature. How do you tell somebody, you know, stop being crippled when they were born that way? I was born crippled. We were all born into sin, shaped in iniquity. How do you tell someone, stop, stop doing it? That's like telling somebody who was born with a degenerative disease where, you know, their hand is like this or their bones break. That's like telling that person, stop, stop, stop bones, stop breaking. And they're like, I can't. Help it, my bones just break. It's like telling an autistic child, stop. I can't help it. I, I was born autistic. But, but this is how we do each other in the world and in the church. We tell people, stop sinning. I was born this way. I was born into sin. The only way I'm going to be able to, something. Something greater than me has to come and help me. And that's Jesus. The cure to sin was always and will forever be Jesus. And that's how we have to look at it. And just because somebody has made an election in their hearts that they will follow Christ and they will believe in Christ doesn't mean that they always look like it. And no, I'm not making excuses for people. I know that we always, we got people out here like, oh, you're making excuses for people to live how they want to live. Let me tell you something. 
if you have somebody that takes what I said, that what I say, and they make an excuse to continue living how they want to live, that's between that person and God, not you. Only God can straighten people up, not you. Oh, that's really all I have to say. I hope you guys have a good day.